So this is a really cute bus and I really like the interior, but when the customers start smelling burning electrical and then you find out that so much of it was improperly done, I have to call that an epic fail. Let's go inside and take a look. So just for frame of reference, this is the bed. Oh, and that's the mini split that has no condensation pan drain. So when it, uh, when the condensation pan fills up with water, it just runs down on the bed. And then for frame of reference here, the batteries and everything are down below the bed. And oh. here's Hi. here's the owner. <laughs> Tell us what um, happened. Yeah, so we um, we were actually here in the bus. I was here with my girls where my husband was at work. And I ran to um, go run to the dump here. We're close by. I was gone for maybe five minutes and I came back. And we started having, um, we smelled some smoke. We honestly didn't know where it was coming from. We thought maybe we light incense or something like that. So we thought maybe something. <laughs> it's a bad I, incense. Honestly, we were like, what Electrical is incense. <laughs> what is this smell? And then um, I looked back here and this whole, the whole bedroom was full of smoke. Um, and you could definitely tell that something was going on. So then I came back here, I opened up underneath, um, and it just kind of gushed out. And then, um, I, uh, started fanning it because I couldn't honestly see what was, what was, um, I didn't know if it was on fire necessarily, or if it was just smoking. Um, but it definitely smelled like burnt rubber, or, you know, plastic. Um, I actually first thought I left something in the oven and for some reason the oven caught something on fire. I honestly didn't know. So, um, but then once I came back here, that's what, that's what we saw and, um, turned off the inverter switch and, um, that was, that was about it. So, and then started calling around to have people help me. <laughs> well, this is, uh, I was pointing out, they turned off the inverter, which stopped the the current, the draw through this terminal, and that stopped the smoking and everything. But if there was an emergency, if something had arced across here and these batteries needed to be disconnected, there's no disconnect in this system. So the only way to disconnect the batteries from the distribution lugs down here, the bus bars, would be to cut one of these cables or get in here with a wrench while it's all hot and smoking and take one of these nuts off and disconnect things. So they've got to have a disconnect put in here. I don't have one with me, um, but we'll put a disconnect in here. We're recrimping all these uh, connections. These are the ones that they did, and I'll show you a photo of what that looks like when we take the tape off. So this is how not to crimp a wire. Look at that. So they just, sorry, I'm shaking this. I'm crawling under this bed. Uh, looks like they just whacked it with a flat blade screwdriver on the insulation. But in here where it should be making contact, it's really not. That might be why they're not getting great output from their solar. Anyway, we'll fix that up. So do you see these bolts? These are M8, uh, 1.25 pitch metric bolts. These are flange bolts with a washer and that's the right length. So it makes a nice tight connection. What the folks that installed this did was just stack up an ass ton of washers to take up enough room here. I'll show you a picture of how that was installed. And then over here, First off, uh, none of these crimps were proper. It looks like they crimped it with a flat blade screwdriver and a hammer. And here's a picture of what these crimps looked like. But because they were loose, they were creating a lot of heat, a uh, high resistance connection. Now this is properly crimped and covered with a heat shrink tubing that's got a an adhesive layer on the inside. So. It's a proper mechanical weld done with a hydraulic crimp tool. And the idiots that put this system together really ought to invest in a hydraulic crimper. This is under a hundred bucks and it makes a proper crimp and keeps things like this from happening. So this terminal lug, which is the main, uh, the positive to the inverter, the most high draw connection was on this fuse right here 
and the nut was just finger tight. So because that wasn't tight, it doesn't create a good connection. And even though it didn't blow the fuse, it wasn't too much current, so the fuse didn't blow. But this terminal, this ring terminal right here was so loose that it was arcing and there's a lot of resistance and that creates heat and it melted this. So this is what the customers experienced. There's a little better view of that melted terminal there. And you can see the, the insulation there is all melted. So let's take a look at this little rogues gallery of bad crimps. This is the one that was, sorry. This is the one that obviously heated up. I mean, who calls that a crimp? There's that one. That one. These are just butcher jobs. Now you know why I call this the epic fail.